Good morning, my dear friends. Today the church does celebrate the second Sunday of Lent, and my sermon this morning is based upon the epistle appointed for today, coming to us from the fourth chapter of St. Paul's first, excuse me, first epistle written to the Thessalonians. So ye would abound more and more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, as we hear from this beginning of the fourth chapter of St. Paul's first letter, for first epistle, excuse me, written to the Thessalonians, St. Paul writes that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and please God, so ye would abound more and more. St. Paul, you see, is writing this epistle or this letter to the Thessalonians, encouraging them to, again, do as they have been taught, in other words. So often you see, and again, we see it in our, in our children, we see it in our society at large, we see people, and uh, quite frankly, it's, it's us as well, but again, it's just a human trait is the point that I'm making. But so often we see in our children or others or even ourselves, as I stated, that it is easier to do the wrong thing than it is to do the right thing. There's a number of reasons for this, quite frankly, is because sometimes it becomes easier just to go with the crowd. Sometimes it's easier to, to withstand people's criticism of us or, or their mockery of us, quite frankly. Ha, have you ever been found yourself in the situation where you said, well, I, I, I don't know if I should do that. I, I don't think that's right. I, I don't think we should. And then you get, you get mocked for it. Oh, come on. What, what, what are you, a Sunday school teacher? Come on. Let's get with the program. Let's go. So often in our society today, as I stated, we as Christians, or if you try to be a truly faithful, devout Christian, certainly you run the risk of not only being mocked for your beliefs, but also be persecuted for what you believe. You can be persecuted verbally or otherwise for standing up for what you believe in is right. And again, the problem in our, in our politically correct society in which we live, the, the absolute hypocrisy that, again, some people are favored and some groups are favored by what, while others aren't. But I digress. The point being the same. St. Paul is making a point to tell the Thessalonians, look, you have been trained, you have been told, you have been taught the ways of God. So now it's time for you, I hope, he's saying, I hope that you will go forward and you will act according to what God would have you do. But as I stated, unfortunately, and this is the reason why St. Paul was once again emphasizing this, is because he found that the, Seth, excuse me, the Thessalonians were, again, not acting according to what they had been taught, what he had taught them to believe. They were going against God's will. And so as a result, this is why he wrote this epistle to them, to re-emphasize to them, this is how you have been taught, Hopefully you will act this way. Again, elsewhere in Scripture, this time in the 12th chapter of St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, we hear the following. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In order, again, to be devout Christians, and I didn't use the word perfect Christians, but devout faithful Christians, we have to, as St. Paul writes here, 
we have to be renewed in our mind. So often, again, dear friends, and as we heard here, unfortunately, so often in our society, the majority of our society is, in fact, conformed to the world. They would rather listen to the advice of, of movie actors and actresses. They would rather listen to the words of sports stars. They would rather listen to the words of politicians, the hollow words, might I add, of politicians who are only trying to seek votes so they can stay in office and give you what you want to hear. But again, I digress. So often we want to listen to commercials. We want to listen to our friends' advice. We want to listen to, again, our own desires. All of these things we listen to first and foremost before we listen to God. We are conformed to this world. This is what St. Paul writes that we should not be. We need to be renewed in our mind, renewed in our faith, renewed in our wills, renewed in our commitment. Again, as faithful, devout Christians who are certainly far from perfect, and I just speak for myself, quite frankly, because I'm not going to accuse anybody else, but I can certainly accuse myself. I am far from perfect, but that being said, I and you have to be renewed in our faith so that we can stay close to God and to do his holy will. Elsewhere in the epistle to Philippians, this time again in the fourth chapter and the ninth verse, we hear, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Again, as I point out in my sermon so often, St. Paul is stating here, not only that as Christians, we need to preach not only with the words that come from our mouth, but also with the actions that we perform in our lives. This is why, and, and quite frankly, the, there's valid criticism for this in the world because this is what happens so often in the, in the public at large, in the media and so forth. They, they criticize Christians, they criticize the church because one of its members gets caught doing something that they shouldn't be doing. They preach one way, in other words, and they live their life another way. And then it gets pointed out, oh, you're nothing but a hypocrite. And then it, it puts us all in a bad light. Listen, as I try to point out so often, <clears throat> excuse me, I beg your pardon, Christians are not perfect. I'm certainly not perfect, as I pointed out. But that being said, we need to do our utmost and we need to do our best to continue to live the way in which God not only has taught us to live, but expects us to live. And in order to do this, we need to have courage and we need to have strength and we need to have fortitude. Because it's not easy for a devout Christian, again, to live in today's society. We get mocked for our beliefs. We get persecuted for what we believe in. Again, if you go back to the Old Testament in the fifth chapter of, of the prophet Isaiah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. And these words stand certainly more true today than, than ever. We hear, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Dear friends, in the society and the time in which we live, certainly there is example after example after example in which, again, Light is called darkness, and darkness is called light. 
And if you try to stand up and say, the, say something different, you're going to get mocked and you're going to get persecuted. They do it on a daily basis, whether it be in the media or whether it be on The View or whether it be in, in the Oscars telecast. The list goes on and on. We have to have the fortitude and we have to have the strength to move forward in the presence of God to stand all this criticism and withstand all this abuse and withstand all this mockery that the world gives to us. And this is why I said, like I did earlier, quite frankly, sometimes it's easier just to be quiet. Shh, don't say anything. It's easier to stand quiet when we see things wrong because we, we know we're going to get mocked. We know we're going to get persecuted. It's more difficult to stand up for what's right sometimes, certainly. It's more difficult to make our voices known in the world in which we know we're going to get persecuted for our beliefs. And yet, this is exactly what God did when he sent his only son into the world. This is exactly what happened to our blessed Savior. He was mocked and he was persecuted for what he chose to believe and what he chose to teach about his heavenly Father. And yet, our blessed Lord had the fortitude and the strength to keep moving forward, keep moving forward to that blessed cross my dear friends, especially in this time of Lent, we know that we too have to keep moving forward, keep moving forward to the cross, keep moving to that hill, forward to that hill at Calvary, keep following our blessed Savior and his footsteps. Let us this day always remember what our Lord did for us on our behalf and then try to emulate him as best as we can to remember his words, and to try to live out those words in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.